Okay, add a cylinder and add some loop cuts. Duplicate your segment twice with a shift D and make an end cap. For the start cap, I'm just flipping the end cap upside down. The origin needs to be at the top for this one. Add a curve at the origin of the cylinder. Add an array modifier to the cylinder. Set the array to fit curve and it'll automatically add enough repetitions to follow the curve. Change the offset amount so it goes in the right direction. I'm using the Z axis. Extrude the curve into some shape. To make it follow the bends of the curve, add a curve modifier, choose the curve object and select the axis you're using. In the array modifier, enable merge so it joins the segments together. Under caps, set the start and end caps to your objects. You can see here it doesn't line up properly at first, so just go into edit mode and move it up or down slightly. It just needs to be close enough that the merge range captures it. For easy use, set the meshes to unselectable and make the path in front in display options. Now we have a self-lengthening pipe with start and end caps that follows the curve. Now you can add bits of detail to the original object to make the pipe more interesting. Here I've made a cylinder and added a single bump which will create this electrical housing. Add two shape keys and tweak the position of edge loops differently in each one. Now you can control the spacing and width of the pipe bumps with the shape key strength. Now model a bracket. Snap it to the position of your cable. Like before, add an array set to fit curve and a curve modifier. Adjust the offset on the array so that instead of a constant extrusion, you get a bracket every so often. Corners can be a problem for brackets, but if you change the bracket back to fixed count, you can Alt-D the bracket object and manually place chunks of brackets to avoid problem areas. Let's talk about what else you can do with paths. They're also pretty good for making wires. If you up the bevel amount, it will give the path some thickness. Hit V and set a handle to vector to make hanging wires. Add a circle path and use it as the bevel object. Now the circle is extruded along the path. Editing the circle path now lets you add more complexity. Just go into edit mode and duplicate it a few times. And use Ctrl T to make the wires bend and twist. If you space out the circles in the bevel object, you can make the bundles look messier. More loose wires means more visual chaos. If you're making tangles, extrude one main loop in the master path and then add a few circles for bulk. Use Ctrl T to make the wires twist nicely. If you hit Alt S, you control the width of each loop individually. You can also do it to individual points if you really want to. Grab one of those brackets and make its array and curve modifiers follow this curve. Now you can attach these to walls. Use Ctrl T to tilt paths and round corners. If you make a singular detail like cable ties or tags, you can slide them along as well. Or model a new bracket that hangs pipes off the ceiling. Modify the bevel object so that all the pipes are hanging on the same plane, and you've got an easy way to detail industrial corridors. Array and curve modifiers only follow the main section of curve, but you can add extra wires by duplicating sections. These ones won't have brackets following them, so you can do different things with the design. You can also select them and assign different materials. Okay, that's great, now we have a bunch of wires, but wouldn't it be nice to have them actually end in a plug? Download a bunch of reference images and start modelling. Most of the time a circle or cube will be a good base, then just add loop cuts and extrusions. Assign some nice metal and plastic materials. I made a gold and silver version for most of these plugs, and made some self-randomising materials for the RCA and Ethernet cables. If you look around online, you can find manufacturer's guides or electrical manuals that tell you what colours different types of plugs come in. Okay, that's great, we put plugs on the wires, but how about ripping them off and exposing the insides? To make a twist of wires, I'm using the bevel object from before and making it a bunch of circles. Use Ctrl T to twist the path around, and then raise the resolution so it's smooth enough. Apply it and turn it into a mesh. Now set the proportional editing to connected only and scale the ends down a bit. Make a mess and fray them a bit. Grab some wires and twist them out. If you remember the array setup from the start of the video, we can take this frayed object and assign it as the end cap of an arrayed wire. 
We're going to want some frayed wire variations as well. You can swap what object is on the end of which wire by selecting it from the array modifier. Now we have the end of one wire. Duplicate the whole thing and convert it to a mesh. Now this is a mesh object, we can actually use this as the end cap on an array. We just have to rescale first. So now we can add recursive amounts of detail and there's no end to how far we can take this. Unfortunately, the array method overwrites materials and destroys vertex groups, which means the electrical wires are a little trickier. Once you've finished designing your curve object, snap the 3D cursor to the last point, duplicate one of your plugs with Alt-D, and then snap it to the 3D cursor. Select the plug and then the wire, go into edit mode and hit Ctrl H, hook to selected object. Now by moving the plug, you take the end of the cable with you. As a bonus, you can Alt-D these setups and take advantage of instancing, and because the hook is a modifier, you can move the plugs around to make variations without having to model separate curves. If you ever need more control, go to Object Relations, Make Single User, Object and Data. Well, there you go. This project started with me experimenting with arrays, and I followed a few interesting tangents. I've put the blend file up on Gumroad if you want to grab these assets. All the plugs and wire ends are in here, plus some array setups ready to go and some different bevel objects for paths. If you'd rather make them yourself, I'll upload a time lapse of the plug modeling soon and I hope the rest of it should be fairly easy to follow from this video. If you get stuck, leave a comment and I'll try to help out. Thanks for watching.